2020, my name is Lady O, and I'll be your MC, cheerleader, and hype girl for the coolest pitch event in town. I give you my golden guarantee. What you're about to witness will leave you touched, moved, and inspired. You are in for a real treat. As many of you are aware, this event was intended to be an in-person celebration. However, due to coronavirus, we have made this a virtual event. While we are so excited to share and celebrate in this moment, we must acknowledge that during this unprecedented time, one thing has remained completely true. Small businesses are the backbone of our economy. We are seeing, feeling, and experiencing a world without small businesses right now. Ventures has known that small businesses are the backbone for years. Since 1995, we've shown up for thousands of women, people of color, LGBTQ identifying folk, and immigrants who are all lifting themselves up out of poverty and contributing their unique skills, gifts, and abilities back to the community with their entrepreneurship. Thank you for saying yes to an authentic invitation to dismantle and destroy the narrative. Entrepreneurs have to do it alone. That there is a script one must follow in order to achieve success. This is a very, full, very powerful thing. It has led Ventures to 25 years of advancing the American dream forward. Now more than ever, we need your support to sustain services for our businesses that are suffering and invite you to donate by clicking on the link in the comments. Although we can't be here together, of course I would love that, we are honored to have both our current executive director and founder join us for a few words. Muchas gracias, Octavia. Me encanta tu energía y alegría. And muy buenas noches a todos. Bienvenidos a InnoVentures 2020, la única competencia de propuesta de negocios bilingüe en español en inglés en nuestra región. Thank you, Octavia. I love your energy. And welcome, everybody. Good evening. This is InnoVentures 2020, the only competition in our region that is in English and Spanish. I'm very excited to be here tonight with all of you. And because we are responding on coronavirus, we decided to change the format of our event online. We are excited that the entire team, the board of directors, that everybody came along and then we decided to kind of turn things around and being creative, innovative, and this is who we are at Ventures. I really excited that I also have with me uh, in this uh, new event, Peter Ross. So Peter Ross is supposed to be with us here tonight in Seattle. Peter is the founder of Washington Cash. He founded it Washington Cash in 1995, but because the coronavirus, he was not able to be with us tonight. Now, Ventures has been evolved and been changing all these years. But I'm so excited, Peter, that you are here. Thank you so much for making the time. And I can't wait to when all these things pass that we meet here in Seattle. Thank you, Peter. Thanks, Beto. I, I wish I could be there in person too, but at least I can I can be here virtually. And uh, I really just want to uh, congratulate you and your staff on your perseverance and turning this event around and, and making it happen no matter what. It's, it's really a testament to your commitment to uh, your business owners that, that you're able to make this happen. That's right, Peter. We are super committed to our community of entrepreneurs here at Ventures. And yeah, but also I want to remind everybody that we want to have an event that is participatory. And the, in order to do that, you can vote for your favorite from number one to six. All that information will be available at the comment on the Facebook comments. So if you want to vote for your favorite, this is the moment. So just look into the, com into the comments and just participate and it's going to be fun because we're going to have a $300 award for the public favorite and yeah so please help us and support us with that yeah Thank this you. this event and what ventures is, has done over the years is, is truly amazing i could not have imagined uh what this organization has become uh, when i was planning it out in the back office of my small apartment on capitol hill and uh, it's just such a 
a great organization and, and what you've accomplished is, is truly humbling. Well, we are very glad that you were able to join us tonight, Peter. I appreciate your time and, and dedication to our mission. Uh, so looking forward to hear about your stories and how do you start ventures now? Well, Washington Cash Now Ventures. And yeah, looking forward to hear all those stories. Muchas gracias por acompañarnos esta noche, Peter. Y pues estoy súper entusiasmado y, y emocionado de escuchar todas las historias que tienes por compartirnos cuando comenzaste Washington Cash, lo que ahora es Ventures. Yeah, Beto, I'm really excited to uh, listen to the pitches too, but first I have something special to share with everyone. Um, some of you may know uh, the name Mohamed Yunus, who is the founder of the Grameen Bank in Bangladesh, which uh, he won the Nobel Prize a few years back. Um, and the Grameen Bank really was one of the first organizations in the world to give poor women a, a loan to start small businesses. And uh, he sparked a international microfinance movement that's going strong today and really inspired me now 30 years ago to start Washington Cash, now Ventures. And uh, we're incredibly fortunate today to have a short video by Dr. Yunus uh, thanking and congratulating us all for those 25 years. Peter, how wonderful to hear from Mohammed Yunus. Dr. Mohammed Yunus have inspired so many of us about what is the impact in microfinances and micro lending and how with the small micro loans people can move out of poverty. So I'm looking forward to hear from him and then I will see you soon after the pitches. Thank you. What a great news. You are celebrating the 25th anniversary of your organization. Previously Washington Cash, now the venture. So there's a long history of 25 years. You came to Bangladesh in 1995 to attend our exposure and dialogue program. And we talked about Grameen Bank, what we have done, everything. I had no idea that it will go so deep into your heart. And as we call it, uh, you have been bitten by the bug. And you went back to Seattle and started the same thing that we have done in my early days, started a few women trying to see what can be done to transform them into entrepreneurs. It was a tough job and you saw that. And I was, uh, as I was uh, hearing back you about your uh, journey, that's a tough journey, but you never gave up. You are as stubborn as anybody can get in, in the whole world. That alone for your stubbornness, you get all the congratulations you can get and you never gave up. And that's why the Washington cash worked so well. And then you got into venture. And now the venture together, you have completed the 25th year of your work. You deserve all the kudos that we can all assemble. So I again congratulate you for the wonderful work that you have done and wish you all the luck. Thank you. Wow, isn't that amazing? I truly believe in becoming whoever it is you want and that entrepreneurship is the vehicle to get you there. I am personally grateful to Ventures for helping me start my business, Untangled Spaces, in 2011 and giving me the opportunity to join the board of directors in 2018. But tonight, I want to give you Ventures' mission in action. I want you to see it the way that I see it. I want to share that view with you, showing you that leveling the playing field for low-income entrepreneurs in your own backyard and listening to their pitches, they're going to have a chance to win thousands of dollars and grow, expand, and continue to contribute to our community. For the second year, I'm delighted to be your host of Interventures 2020. Our pitch competition and annual fundraiser educates, empowers, and equips Ventures clients to take their business to the next level by participating in a three month long bracketed style competition. Contestants spend months honing their five minute pitch with the support of experts and coaches who teach them the best techniques in public speaking and presenting. We are incredibly grateful for our sponsors, of course. At the backer level, Kaiser Permanente, Mama, Lil Peppers, Liberty Mutual, and Columbia Bank. 
at the investor level, PCC, community markets, good hangups, and BECU. We are especially grateful to our champion sponsors, Laird Norton and Friends of Waterfront, who stepped up in a huge way to support Interventures this year. Thank you for your commitment to small businesses and our community. We are also grateful to all our volunteers who have contributed more than 75 hours of coaching and providing valuable feedback to clients as they refine their pitches over the past few months. It really does take a village. I am so pleased to introduce our fabulous judges, Matt Hill from Laird Norton, Pedro Gomez with the City of Seattle of Economic Development, Roz Edison, owner of Marination Mobile and Super 6, Pagina Lynn Roberts, owner of Reap and Leap Coaching and Consulting, Yessi Aguilar, owner of Celeste Bridal Boutique, and finally, Valentina Vitoles of Seattle Women's Impact Fund. Passion, grit, diligence, perseverance, faith, these were the qualities displayed by the six finalists you will be hearing from tonight. Individuals who weren't afraid to set aside their fears, embrace feedback, and refine their pitches week after week to land an opportunity to get in front of you and share how you can help them catapult their business forward. Before we launch into Interventures, the pitches, and all the fabulous fun, i like to pull you into the vision of this event. Innoventures is the culmination of a three-month-long bracket-style pitch competition with three goals. First, to offer a powerful training and development opportunity in public speaking and delivering an effective presentation for our business owners, which ultimately equips them with skills to take their businesses to the next level regardless of how far they advance in the program. Second, to serve as an incubator swarming with real customer opportunities for you, the community who relentlessly and unapologetically believes in our entrepreneurs, a bunch of wonderful people who make wonderful products, provide wonderful services, and would love to sell them to you and anyone in your network who also love supporting local small businesses. And lastly, the third goal of InnoVentures is to continue to nourish and expand the thriving network of support we've cultivated over the last 25 years. Individuals, organizations, and institutions who intentionally support Washington's micro business owners. Individuals who may have limited income but oh honey, they wield unlimited potential, which is going to be proven in this room right now. All entrepreneurs pitching today have graduated from Ventures eight week business basics course and are active in their businesses as of today. We ask entrepreneurs to pitch an innovation that would take their businesses to the next level. We wanted to know, how is this gonna sustain your innovation? if you receive a cash investment. Each business will explain how they will use the cash prize, if they get it, of $5,000 to move their innovation forward. 40 businesses applied, 21 competed at quarterfinals, 15 advanced to semifinals, and our top six emerged today as your InnoVentures 2020 pitch finalists. Six of the 21 quarterfinals pitched in Spanish, three advanced to semifinals, and you'll hear from one of those finalists tonight. The rules. The entrepreneur has five minutes to make their pitch to the judges and audience using a slide deck. There is no interactive Q&A during the pitches. Entrepreneurs receive feedback after quarterfinals and semifinals from volunteer coaches and judges to refine their pitch. Our panel of judges will be scoring on a one to five scale in the following criteria. Customer need and market demand, innovation, feasibility, vision, and presentation. 
the maximum score possible is 25. I know you're sitting behind your computer right now, but I implore you to really lean in and listen to these pitches because you might be able to support these businesses in a very unique way. You also have the chance to vote for your favorite pitch until Sunday at 9 p.m. We will announce the crowd favorite on Monday. Information is in the comments. And now, without further ado, let's introduce tonight's first pitch finalist. Gina Gray believes that if it wasn't for the access to networking, support, and solidarity she's experienced with her fellow entrepreneurs, starting a business would have been a very isolating experience. Gina recently commented that Ventures brings clients together and helps her feel like she is a part of a community that isn't afraid to challenge themselves to move, to move past their struggles and limitations. One part of Ventures program that Gina has leveraged is our retail store, an incubator in Pike Place Market, the Ventures Marketplace, which feature products from 82 local businesses. The Ventures Marketplace made $294,599 in sales last year, with $147,299 taken home by vendors. The Ventures Marketplace is an incubation program that allows clients to display and sell their products while reaching, receiving coaching from retail experts on product display, design, pricing, and packaging. Gina said that classes, mentorship, and the Ventures Marketplace were just the right combination of services for her to confidently expand her vision for her business. Take it away, Gina. Hello, I'm Gina Gray, founder of Uliva, where our vision is health and wellness for the planet and all of its inhabitants. Our products feel wonderful, have a lovely scent, and are made with simple, whole ingredients. Twelve years ago, I was reading my shampoo bottle and was suddenly lost in a flurry of research trying to understand a long list of toxic ingredients. That was the day I started making my own products from scratch. Eight years later, after urging from friends and family, I started the business. <clears throat> after the initial flood of supportive orders, there was suddenly silence, and I quickly realized that I needed to approach sales from more than one angle. A month later, we were at our first maker's market, and these events are an important part of our business model and marketing strategy. They give us the opportunity to tell our stories, meet with customers face-to-face, -face, and answer their questions about our product line. Since our launch, we've seen 80,000 in sales and over 3,000 orders online. Last year, we saw a 40% increase in our sales, and the beginning of 2020 has shown us um, our sales have tripled. And a 200% growth in wholesale has made it clear that this is where we should focus to truly scale the brand. We started to work with PCC. Seattle made launched a shop at SeaTac, which has brought us a truly international audience. And we worked with dozens of brick and mortar shops, including Ventures Marketplace. Um, we take our ingredients very seriously and create our products by studying chemistry and examining evidence. I have safety training and certification in essential oil through the Tisserand Institute and we're proud of our green business certification through EnviroStars. Our goal is to lead in this industry by example. We needed to seal our containers, but I hated the idea of bring, putting more plastic into the waste stream. So after a shockingly extensive international search, I found a biodegradable option. And I spent over a year developing our luxurious shampoo bars, which ensure everything going down the drain is biodegradable and they eliminate unnecessary packaging waste. Our vision rests on three pillars at Uliva, clean ingredients for people and planet, ethical farming and labor, and transparent consumer information. It's um, our priority to let our customers know that natural ingredients can be just as problematic as synthetic ones when not used appropriately. For example, one of our best sellers is our deodorant. When I created this recipe, I looked to the market and found that every natural deodorant contained baking soda. This seemingly innocuous ingredient, along with improperly used essential oils, are chief offenders in skin irritation. And I'm proud to say I brought the first baking soda-free deodorant to the market. <clears throat> Everything at Oliva is handmade in my Seattle studio. 
We source 73 unique ingredients from all over the world, vigilantly seeking those that do no harm to people or the planet. But we know we can do even better. Our goal is a fully sustainable line from product to packaging. The personal care industry is a $500 billion industry, with natural products accounting for 3%. But that's on the rise. A recent study has found that 50% of consumers are now seeking natural products, specifically focused on sustainable ingredients and packaging. How can we improve our on-package message to better reach today's consumer to let them know our products are exactly what they're looking for? Custom printed boxes would help us communicate our vision and let our customers know that we never use palm oil. Certification through the Environmental Working Group would bring us into the Skin Deep Cosmetics Database, which is where customers go to find skin safe products. It would also allow us to brand our products with their symbol, <clears throat> which would give us immediate recognition for our work and the quality of our ingredients. We want to implement a program through a service called Returnly that will make it easy for customers to send their packaging back to us. Most of our containers can be sterilized and reused, and the rest would go to TerraCycle, a company that's figured out how to recycle anything. Durable, communicative packaging is one barrier standing between us and reaching out to more retail outlets, and the other is barcodes. Once those are implemented, along with our packaging innovation plan, the sky's the limit. We have growth potential at our fingertips. PCC is opening two locations this year, and Stellar Partners, a parent company of Seattle Made, has multiple locations in 19 airports across the country. Um, by, excuse me, <laughs> if we um, maximize our potential in these accounts, we can capture an additional 15,000 in um, annual net income. <sighs> I'm gonna keep going, guys. <laughs> Our next, the next thing that we would do is reach out to these ideal retailers. Once we implement 25 additional wholesale accounts, similar in scale to our current accounts, we can capture an additional 22,000 in net income, meet our financial goals while staying within the scope of our production team. And by production team, I might mean me. Join us in our vision of health and wellness for the planet and all of its inhabitants, and visit us at uliva.com to learn more. Thank you. Woo! History. The first deodorant without baking soda, a Ventures client, who knows where that deodorant's gonna end up around the world. Thank you, thank you, Gina. Did you know that one out of five small businesses across the United States hire one additional employee? If that happened, the country would reach full employment. Now that's the real impact and power that exists in small business ownership. Within two years of completing the business basics course, two of three clients double their revenue and move out of poverty. We are also seeing one of five businesses hire two employees and 83% of businesses survive. Stephanie, our next pitch finalist, has employees, but runs the majority of the business herself. So being in the same situation with other entrepreneurs who are also in a similar phase of their business development helped her get out of her head, normalize her experience, and diminish feelings of the imposter syndrome. From fear to finalist, Stephanie Lentz. Hello. I am Stephanie Lentz and I'm the founder of Scoop Marketplace, Seattle's zero waste grocery store where customers bring in reusable containers to fill with their desired quantity of our package free food, home goods and personal care products. A few years ago, my family made some significant lifestyle changes beginning with our diet. Through my research, I learned about plastic pollution, including microplastics and chemicals leaching from packaging directly into our food. My eco-anxiety was on high alert, and while I had no idea how to solve the problem, I knew that I could stop contributing to it. The average person creates 4.5 pounds of trash each day, and we purchase disposable products that are actually designed to be used for only a few minutes, but will remain on Earth forever. Packaged foods also contribute to food waste. Studies show that a family of four throws away approximately $2,000 worth of food each year. Additionally, packaging is just plain inconvenient. 
My Solution, a package-free shop where goods are sold by weight. Our products encourage sustainable living. Our sourcing supports ethical businesses with an emphasis on small, local, and minority-owned. And we have the opportunity to work with businesses and consumers to normalize the use of reusable, refillable containers. I opened Scoop in the Central District on Earth Day last year. Our customers have loved watching it grow, and they're always commenting on the fun new products that we bring in. Since joining the Seattle Zero Waste Group, I've learned that not only is there a rapidly growing zero waste community in Seattle, but there is a high demand for a shop that allows them to purchase all of their package-free groceries in one location. They are looking for local, organic, ethically sourced products, and they want to support a business with a low carbon footprint. I am confident that we are on trend with this concept. With the measurable growth in zero waste communities online and in person and the increase in organic sales, it shows that people care where their food comes from and the impact it has along the way. Since opening the shop, we have experienced continual revenue growth. Sales from just the past three months have increased 45% from the previous quarter. And I'm not putting any limitations on what we will accomplish in the future. Our mission is to normalize zero waste grocery shopping by teaching people how they can improve the quality of their lives as they learn to walk more gently on the planet. People are always telling me, that's so innovative, but is it really? I know that bulk shopping isn't a new idea, so how do we offer this service in a way that meets the demands of our modern culture? What are people looking for in a grocery store? Trust, efficiency, high quality and low prices, Convenience. I know that convenience is a top priority. And while I am eager to have a scoop location in every neighborhood, the best way to meet the demands of the community now is to take the bulk goods to them. Enter the Scoop Mobile. A mobile bulk shop would allow us to have regularly scheduled visits to different communities throughout the greater Seattle area. Customers could bring their containers to shop from the truck or place an order online ahead of time. Every time we set up a Scoop pop-up shop, members of our community show up with their jars and say, I was so excited to see that you were in my neighborhood today. We have had requests to serve more than 40 different Seattle area neighborhoods and have identified some optimal starting points. Projecting our current revenue growth shows the progress of a startup business serving one neighborhood, but the Scoop Mobile would serve upwards of five communities per week, which has the potential to more than quadruple our revenue. I know of two other mobile bulk shops in England and France. This is a relatively new idea that I would be piloting here in the Pacific Northwest. Upon proving viability, it could be easily replicated and used to serve food deserts. I plan to partner with businesses such as Starbucks, REI, and Amazon to bring the Scoop Mobile to their campuses as a way to serve their employees and the general public simultaneously. I am asking for $125,000 in startup funds to purchase and refurbish a truck, install equipment, and stock inventory. With a well-equipped mobile bulk shop, we will exponentially expand our reach and accelerate our growth. If awarded the $5,000 in a Ventures Prize, we will streamline our operations with a new scale system, purchase a fridge, and bring in new inventory including fresh produce and specialty items from local makers. As part of our commitment to innovation, we have introduced Scoop Intelligence to provide digital training opportunities for people who want to learn how to open a zero waste store in their own communities. We recently launched an online shop and delivery service in response to the current health situation. I believe in a better tomorrow, and I know that our climate crisis isn't the end of our story. By reviving the shopping methods of generations past, we are giving ourselves a healthier hereafter. Scoop Marketplace is the future of food, the way it used to be. Thank you. Wow, 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 wow. Stephanie, I needed you 10 years ago. I got rid of all my jars just recently, but I wanna come and scoop from your mobile. Thank you. Our team of staff and contracted topic experts provide customized individual coaching to help clients identify and overcome barriers to business success. Coaches typically help clients with financials, bookkeeping, organization, time management, marketing plans, and goal setting. Angela echoed these truths by sharing that Ventures has helped her in so many ways. Going through the program, 
really solidified the fact that she could actually run a successful business versus it just being a hobby or some pipe dream. In her answer to the question, how has Ventures, Ventures helped your business? She responded, Ventures has been a cheerleader for my business. They hired me on. They were actually the first people to give me a big contract when I decided to jump into this full time. Gave me a full year's worth of work, which is pretty much a big deal to me. I know Angela would agree when I say, Ventures works super hard to uphold its core values of empowerment and integrity because we are both actual proof. Putting the spotlight back on you, pitch finalist number three, Angela, come show us how you like to prosper. I wanted to start with this beautiful homepage and ask one question. Do first impressions matter? Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in. My name is Angela Prosper and I'm the owner of Rainy Day Prosper, a design and photography business here in Seattle. And I think about first impressions all the time, so much so that I designed a business around it. Basically, I help small businesses with their first impressions using my skills in graphic design, web design, and photography. But how did I get here? This camera I'm holding is the very same camera that took this picture of me when I was two years old. It's my dad's camera, and he gave it to me when I was 14. I fell in love with photography at that point and dove in deep. My dad passed away a couple of years ago, and he never really knew what I would do with this gift. But it's this passion for photography and all my years of working for small businesses that has aligned me with my purpose and why I'm here today. When I decided I wanted to start my own business, I immediately went to what I know, photography. But I don't do wedding photography. I do food and beverage, portraits, editorial and storytelling, and product and fashion. I knew good photography was good for business, and I learned that first impressions really do matter. But small businesses didn't get the memo. My clients wanted beautiful photos, but they didn't know what to do with them once the job was done. They needed more help than just my photography skills. <clears throat> We, we are so lucky to have five minutes today to pitch our businesses, but online we get about eight seconds to make a good first impression. And it, you could be the most innovative business in the world, but if you have bad design, you're probably not gonna get very far. And my clients were falling behind. 46% of US small businesses still don't even have a website. And my clients were complaining that they couldn't afford design services. Yet 80% of consumers are going online looking at brands before they even purchase. That's a lot of missed opportunity. So what's my innovation? Well, I wanted to prove the benefits of good design, so I decided to invest in my clients' businesses. And in 2019, I donated over $20,000 of my services. And no, that's, <laughs> I'm not crazy. So now you're probably thinking, how does investing in small businesses help me make more money? Well, here's what I made in 2018 when I wasn't thinking about investing in my clients. And here's what I made in 2019 when I did invest in my clients. I proved the work I did had value, my clients referred me to their friends, and I made more money than I would have if I didn't donate that time. I didn't pay for paid advertisement. All of my work last year was pretty much referrals and repeat customers. One uh, job that I did brought in 11 new projects, and one nonprofit that I worked for brought in $13,000 in gross sales. On average, I was bringing in eight new clients from all of this investment. <clears throat> Basically, what I'm saying is for every dollar I put in, I got $1.68 back. So now I can see where I can go further with this business. It's my vision to grow Rainy Day Prosper to a larger agency where small businesses connect with young creatives. Those creatives get real world experience and a living wage, and the small businesses get more affordable rates and beautiful design. Everyone wins, but I have a long way to go. So how do I scale? <clears throat> Instead of investing for profit, what if we invested in our community? With that $5,000 grand prize, I could put that towards two small businesses for their website design and their branding. But this could lead to 
uh, potential eight more client referrals and over $8,000 in potential um, profit on top of my profit. With a $20,000 investment that matches my donation, I stand to make over $67,000 and I could hire on creatives that could come in and do that extra load for me as those referrals start to multiply. Before I go, I wanna leave you with this quote, which is now more relevant than ever before. <laughs> Please consider investing in a small business today and thank you. Woo! I think I know some young people that can help us make your vision come alive. Thank you so much, Angela. Thank you. That is a very unconventional approach and one that really inspires me. All of our programs are offered in English and Spanish. Last year, we celebrated our 10-year anniversary of the Latino program, which now accounts for about 30% of the 700 entrepreneurs we've served. Because of our relationship approach, ecosystem of support, and spirit of advocacy and innovation, we were able to prepare something very special for you tonight. Pablo thinks of Ventures as a guide, a lighthouse in the middle of the storm, that when he arrived, he didn't really have any idea of where his business was. He particularly highlight, highlighted how Innoventures made him dig deeper and really get to know his market. Things he didn't know before. Things he knew, realized he needed to know in order to thrive. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Pablo Velez, our second pitch contestant in the history of Innoventures to give their entire pitch in Spanish. Woo! El mundo del video. The world of video. Más de un 50% de las empresas en el mundo están usando el video como pieza fundamental en su marketing. Over 50% of companies are using video as an important part of their marketing strategies. Una persona promedio ve 32.2 videos por mes. An average person is exposed to at least 32.2 videos each month. Mi nombre es Pablo Vélez y soy dueño y fundador de Loar 75 Productions y este es mi mensaje. My name is Pablo Vélez and I'm the owner and founder of Loar 75 Productions and this is my message. Todo lo que verán a continuación son producto original de Loar 75 Productions. And all the content that you're going to see in the slideshow is creation by Loar 75 Productions. Trabajamos en la industria del video marketing con diferentes empresas y comunidades. We work in the video marketing industry with clients from different cultures and communities. Hicimos un estudio y de todas las empresas eh, registradas en la ciudad de Seattle, la comunidad latina ocupa 800 empresas registradas. Uh, we did some studies and we, it, they showed that the Latinx owned businesses just in Seattle are around 800. También nos dimos cuenta que la comunidad latina no está utilizando el video como pieza fundamental para competir en el mercado. We also realized that the Latinx business companies are not using video as a way to increase their production. Desafortunadamente, la ciudad de Seattle de 150 ciudades ocupa la posición número 79 en referencia al crecimiento de negocios latinos. And unfortunately, Seattle occupies the 79th position from the 150 cities in the United States in relation to Latinx uh, community growth. Y yo quiero que mi empresa sea una conexión entre el negocio latino y las minorías y el mercado en general. And because of this, I want my business to be a connection between all the Latinx businesses and minority-owned businesses and the general market. En Loar 75 Productions contamos historias y construimos realidades. In Loar 75 Productions, we tell stories and build realities. Creamos contenido audiovisual para los medios y para las plataformas de las redes sociales como Facebook, Instagram y YouTube. And we create audiovisual media content for different platforms like Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. También 
y le decimos al cliente que debe crear e innovar en videos, como videos corporativos, videos comerciales, videos educativos, infovideos y mucho más. We also want to show the client the need to create and innovate with different videos like promotional, educational and commercial. Loar 75 Productions se dio inicio en la ciudad de Seattle en el año 2017. Loar 75 Productions began in 2017 in the city of Seattle. Y nuestra visión está en que creemos en el poder de expresar lo que nuestros clientes tienen en su corazón. And, be, and we believe in the power to create and express what our customers crave in their hearts. Y también eso nos hace ser una respuesta a la necesidad del mercado latino en la ciudad de Seattle y en el estado de Washington. And so we want to be a response to the need of the Latin audiovisual market in Seattle, but also the whole Washington state. Actualmente atraemos a nuestros clientes en tres maneras diferentes. At the moment, we reach our customers in three different ways. La primera es el 30% en marketing y redes sociales. 30% in marketing and social networks. También un 40% en ventas eh, directas persona a persona. Also, 40% by direct sales with a salesperson. Y otro 30% es el referido de clientes satisfechos. And 30% by the referral of our satisfied customers. En el año 2017 hicimos una ganancia de 15 mil dólares. En el año 2018 llegamos los, a los 25 mil dólares. En el año 2019 alcanzamos los 35 mil dólares. Este año, en 2020, queremos llegar a los 50 mil dólares para proyectarnos a un 2021 con mucha fuerza de 70 mil dólares. So, in 2017, we were able to gain 15,000 dólares in revenue. By 2018, we did 25,000, by 2019, 35,000. We're expecting to end this year with $50,000 and we want to project ourselves to be earning around $70,000 by the end of 2021. Actualmente atendemos y podemos atender cuatro clientes por mes. Cada cliente nos da un proyecto alrededor de mil dólares. At the moment, we're only able to serve around cl four clients a month, which uh, is around $1,000 Per project. Y también mensualmente esto se nos duplica, teniendo que poner en espera a nuevos clientes y nuevos proyectos. But our production is in a problem right now because we're getting around the double of clients and we're putting them in a waste list because we can handle all of them. Por eso necesitamos eh, proyectarnos a nuevos equipos. Y actualmente estamos eh, proyectándonos a, a largo plazo con equipos en un valor de 25.500 dólares. Because of this, we're looking for a long-term investment for new equipment for around 25.000 dólares. Con la ayuda de Innoventures y los 5.000 dólares, podríamos empezar a adquirir equipos e iniciar nuestra inversión. Uh, with the help of Innoventures and the 5.000 dólar price, we will be able to buy new equipment and start this investment. Los equipos que necesitamos son los siguientes. Un dron de $1,500 dólares. We need a drone for $1,500. Una computadora de $2,000 dólares para edición. A new computer and editing program for $2,000. Y una cámara de video de $1,500 dólares. And a video camera for $1,500. El dron nos ayudaría porque actualmente rentamos un dron y nos cuesta $300 dólares la renta. At the moment, we're renting a drone, and per project is around $300. Un drone no solamente nos ahorraría dinero, sino también ganaríamos dinero y nos posicionaría mucho más en el mercado. And by buying it, we would be able to get to the next level in, competitive, in the competitive market. Y realmente, al mes de tres proyectos haríamos $900, dólares, y al año serían $10,800 dólares que ganaríamos. We will be earning around $900 per month if we have three projects, and by the end of the year, we're estimating to be saving around $10,000. La computadora también nos ayudaría a duplicar la producción y tener una respuesta en el 60%. By buying a new computer, we will be able to double our production and earn around 60% more. También nos permitiría eh, contratar un nuevo personal para producción y ayudar a poder liberar eh, lo que tenemos de clientes y, co y proyectos en espera. Also, we would be able to hire a new person for the production area. With this, we would be able 
to uh, see and attend all our clients that are currently on a wait list. Y termino diciéndoles estas palabras con todo el corazón. Del tamaño de tus sueños serán tus alas. And I just want to end with one of my favorite quotes. The size of your dreams will be the size of your wings. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Wow, Pablo. Click. Your wings are going to expand really, really, really far. I, showed you, I saw that you showed a whole, like, urban city. And I love that you made it personal to make a change and impact in your own community. Thank you. Thank you. The cornerstone of our program is an eight-week business basics course that serves as the entry point of every new participant. The curriculum of this course is designed to help people with low incomes and unlimited potential define, organize, and launch their own micro business. Participants bring their business ideas to class and work with peers to figure out how to turn them into profitable, profitable and sustainable enterprises. Lessons include marketing, financial statements, operations, licensing, taxes, and more. Ventures has served over 700 individuals. One of them, our next pitch finalist. Siobhan said that when she first started going through Ventures Business Basics course, she was just starting to formulate her business concept. Week by week, it helped her dive into several different aspects of business she didn't know about. After graduating, Siobhan took a sales class with Steve, the same instructor she took the Business Basics course with. And every three months, her classmates, herself and Steve, meet up to talk about business updates, ideas, and really support one another. This is also Siobhan's second year participating in this in a Ventures program. And that, it has been a great opportunity for her to continue to evaluate where she's at and where she wants to take her business next. During her interview, Siobhan said, it also provided me with really good speaking practice because last year, when I first pitched, I was so nervous, I couldn't even remember what I said. I blacked out. But since then, I've been paid to speak at least five different times. InnoVentures has helped me become a lot more comfortable with getting in front of people. To make it this far is a true testament of her never give up spirit. Welcome Siobhan Powell to the stage. Unbelievable, remember that word. When I was three years old, I started attending a camp for burn survivors. This was my introduction to the outdoors and a place where I got to be around people that looked like me. Fast forward a number of years, I went on my first solo backpacking trip and was pulled over by the police. Question on why I was in the area, I told him I was there for backpacking and he told me my story was unbelievable. Then called for backup and told backup my story was unbelievable. After the situation was resolved, I thought to myself, what could I do? I had over 20 years of event management experience, so in 2018, I launched the Refuge Outdoor Festival, a camping weekend geared toward people of color, inclusive of all, and the only one of its kind in the nation. We have had people travel here to Seattle from DC, California, Canada, and everywhere in between. My name is Siobhan Powell. I am the founder of Golden Bricks Events, a company creating special events and festivals, highlighting diversity, nature, and life. After years of experience outside and as the event planner at REI, I continue to see issues around diversity, equity, and inclusion in the outdoor industry, conservation, events, and special events, in particular festivals. Although 38 million people of color participate in outdoor recreation every year, I believe that countless others would given the right opportunities because that represents less than 27% of POCs in the US. But people of color still face barriers when it comes to getting outside, like safety, experience, transportation, and gear, just to name a few. By focusing on people of color, we can meet the needs of a more diverse and inclusive community. Numerous studies have shown that getting outside and participating in recreation has positive health benefits like decreasing depression, reducing complications from diabetes, and strengthening communities. 
and we're living in the experience economy. Just look at social media and the Outdoor Rec Act, which now allows the federal government to track the outdoor industry toward GDP. In the first year alone, over $427 billion were tracked. This means there are opportunities for us and Golden Bricks is committed to getting 10,000 people of color outside via events that we own, manage, or consult on by 2022. To date, we've gotten out over 1,000 people to do things like camping and hiking, learn skills like fishing and fire making, but it's not only about the numbers, it's about the connections made for ongoing outdoor engagement and the stories shared. Those are just a few of the outlets that have covered us, as well as one of my favorite quotes from a first year attendee. Our primary revenue comes from ticket sales, sponsorships, and consulting. As for refuge, we triple ticket sales from year one to two and are looking to do the same this year. As well, over 80% of our sponsors came back in year two. These first few years have been a proof of concept, not only for the festival, but for the business, and we're looking to grow. We will be adding new programming here in Seattle, as well as launching the festival in new markets. One, California, because over 20 people flew in with no direct marketing efforts from that region. And two, Georgia, specifically Atlanta, because it's one of the most diverse markets in the U.S. Consulting is important, and in the last year, we've worked with a number of different partners. Because we have bold expansion plans, I am requesting $100,000 in funding. How that breaks down is 75% would go to the refuge festivals, the remaining to upgrading technology, new programming, and continuing education. I am asking InnoVentures for $5,000 to go to our direct immediate refuge festival needs, which includes increasing staff, launching a national marketing campaign, and putting deposits on new venues. That tripling can happen with your support. And this isn't about a one-off weekend or a one-time experience. It's about long-lasting impact on communities and making the unbelievable believable. Here are just some of the updates I'd like to share since beginning the InnoVentures program. I've been able to confirm locations and venues as well as bring on new partners. So thank you in advance for helping change the face of the outdoors and I'll see you outside. Thank you. Siobhan, you don't know this, but I've heard about you and you've already ugh, made such an impact in our community. I've seen the emails, I've gotten the invites, I even tried to perform at one of your events. What you're doing is huge. It's so believable and keep going. Originally inspired in 1995 by the Grameen Bank, which provided low interest collateral free loans to women living in poverty in Bangladesh, our organization started with one program and one focus, which was to lend to women. With great pride, I share with you that nearly 70% of our entrepreneurs we serve today are women. And we now offer in-depth courses on marketing, sales, operations, and financial management. Each course consisting of 6 to 12 week sessions and about 2 hours in length, covering advanced topics which help small businesses grow. Our next pitch finalist said that there are so many things Ventures has helped her with but is especially great, grateful for taking advantage of it, ma advanced marketing and finance courses. They've both helped her a lot. She also, also mentioned staff making her feel really confident and supported. Ventures, we provide two loan products designed to provide clients with the capital they need to grow their businesses. One is peer-based, which is a product of $5,000 that relies on social collateral rather than tangible collateral to secure loans. And the other is a larger collateralized product of up to $35,000. A small loan of just $2,500 can help a business's ability to scale. So we work with entrepreneurs to discuss their financial lives, business goals, and fears about taking on debt. Our relationship-based approach to lending is proven effective 
as we have a 100% repayment rate. Our work makes a difference. We make a real impact in our community. We provide a comprehensive toolbox of services, including coaching, incubation, access to capital, and advocacy. Remember, you will have a chance to vote for your favorite pitch until Sunday at 9 p.m. We will announce the crowd favorite on Monday, and the information is in the comment section below. Hi, everyone. My name is Judith Echegaray. I am the CEO of Glam Snaps Photo Booth, and this is the story of how our company came to life. I sat in the living room with my little sister, holding her hands as she sighed deeply. It was strange to think that just months earlier, we were at the same spot celebrating her engagement. She was so lucky to find her soulmate, and was working really hard to um, plan a beautiful and unforgettable wedding. She really wanted a photo booth that captured those special moments and was, and was struggling to find a photo booth company that spoke Spanish and would make our family and friends feel comfortable. So she asked me if I could help her. And I am a passionate photographer and artist. And of course I said yes. But most importantly, she's my sister, and I would do anything for her. So I immediately got to work with the help of my dad and brother. We created this beautiful handcrafted vintage photo booth, and we use it at the wedding, and we make sure to invite everybody to participate, both in English and Spanish, and everybody had a blast. This is how our first Glam Snaps photo booth came to life. And I was wondering why there were no photo booth companies with bilingual stuff. We as Latinos love to party and we like to celebrate from weddings to quinceañeras to birthday parties and bautisms. And according to the New York Times report, uh, a quinceañera party can cost between 10K and 15K, and the Pew Research Center says, has, says that 17.9 million of the U.S. Latino population is younger than 18 years old. So there is a huge on top market opportunity there. And we did the research here in Washington State, and there is about 52 photo booth companies, and none of them offer Spanish, English, bilingual stuff. And in 2018, Glam Snaps became the first bilingual photo booth company in Washington State. But we didn't stop there. We further innovated our photo booth by integrating superior technical innovations such as premium lighting, state-of-the-art photo software, and high-quality prints. We have experienced a tremendous growth since our launch in 2018. We've grown from $1,000 in our first year to $9,000 in our second year. As of January 2020, we have booked over 32 events, securing $25,000 in revenue. With this $5,000 award today, we will add an additional photo booth, and with an additional $5,000 investment, we, we hire a part-time salesperson for five months. We currently own three photo booths, and unfortunately, we have to put four customers on our waiting list because we didn't have the equipment to serve their needs. With this $5,000 investment, we will be add, adding an additional photo booth and meet their needs. And also, this will allow us to be at four simultaneous events and cover a wider geographic footprint. And we project $113,000 in revenue this year. We, be, we understand markets are currently experiencing an unprecedented, um, unprecedented event with the coronavirus outbreak around the world. We responded, we have responded to the changing marketing needs creating a mini Glam Snaps photo booth at, for the last three weeks at a lower price point. This photo booth is adaptable for smaller gatherings and 
more um, budget friendly. So, and we have success in selling this photo booth in the last two weeks. Glam Snaps was built to be profitable, adaptable, and competitive in the ever-changing market. And finally, I always remember that smile on my sister's face on her wedding day and how we were able to step up for her in times of need. This is how we carry that passion with us every day. And um, this $5,000 investment will be used to continue our commitment of bringing unforgettable, joyful, and glamorous experience to people on their special celebrations. Thank you. Wow. That was amazing, Judith. Thank you. Your pictures are very engaging, and it also lets me know that I have not been attending the right events. Keep going, girlfriend. And I want to remind you that you have until Sunday at 9 p.m. to vote for your favorite pitch in the comments section below. And we will announce your crowd favorite on Monday. And without further ado, I get to introduce to you someone who I see as a mentor, as a friend, a phenomenal leader in Washington State, and someone who's really committed to moving this ventureship forward. Executive Director of Ventures, Beto Yarse. Thank you, Octavia. I really appreciate your kind words and all the work that you are putting in to make this happen, sister. I also feel like I'm very lucky and grateful to be able to be part of your journey, and I'm here for you. I also very inspired for all these speeches. All our clients are the ones who motivate me every day to come to work and to do what I do because their journey is amazing and all the things that they contribute to our economy, to the things that they are doing to support their families, how they are entrepreneurial, innovator, and you can just saw that with the pitches and how enthusiasm and how much work they put into their business. So I'm very, very proud of all of you uh, finalists, but at the same time, I'm proud of everybody who is part of the Ventures Network and the Ventures family. And uh, now I just want to hand it out to Peter because he has some stories to share with us. As I've been sharing the entire night, it's like this is the time that he's going to be sharing how he started Ventures Washington Cash in 1995. So Peter, now this is your time. I appreciate you, my friend. Hey, everyone. Peter Rose here. Uh, glad to be with you tonight. Thrilled to be uh, a part of this event and uh, part of this moment. Um, I'm sorry that I couldn't be there in person, but uh, it's, uh, it's really thrilling to me to be asked back to uh, this kind of event after 25 years and to, to say a few words. And, you know, I've been asked to talk a little bit about the history of Washington Cash and Ventures, and I thought... You know, really, we should be talking about the future. That's what this event's about. When you see the business plan competition and you see the folks that are going to carry on this legacy, that are going to take advantage of the amazing services of ventures, um, that this event uh, is really about uh, what's going to happen next. But it's, it's important to hear a little bit of our context, I think, and where we came from. I'm going to do that. Um, and then I'm going to ask you to join us in the future. Um, so, as some of you know, uh, in the late 90s, I was uh, able to go to Bangladesh to uh, visit the Grameen Bank. The Grameen Bank was giving very small loans, micro loans, to, uh, to women, essentially 100% uh, women, uh, and uh, taking those small loans and starting businesses that were benefiting their families and their communities. Um, I was able to go and um, interview women uh, in their villages. Uh, the one woman that I talked to. Uh, specifically told me that um, before her loan it was the first time she'd ever touched money um, and she was able to turn that loan into a business that benefited her family lifted them out of poverty sent her children to school and um, had her become you know respected in her community um, that was extraordinary uh, the possibility there was intoxicating for me and I brought that back to Seattle with the idea of maybe we should have that here there were very few programs in the United States like that, most were designed for larger businesses, certainly not startup businesses or folks who'd never done business before. And so uh, I started talking about it. And soon after that, other people gravitated toward that idea. Uh, the first folks, uh, Kathy Gilman, um, 
and Ani Brar and Andrea Diamond were some of our first uh, uh, staff people and volunteers that came forward and funders who came forward at that point really also caught the, uh, the bug and really became uh, passionate about what we were doing and the, and the opportunity that we were offering folks because I knew there were hundreds of people in the area that needed this. That wasn't, they weren't going to get this support anywhere else. They weren't going to get a training. They weren't going to get coaching. Uh, they weren't going to get small loans. And so this was really it. And uh, it really drove us. Um, you know, most organizations, uh, you know, they, they value the founder and they value the leaders a, a little too much. You know, certainly I started the, this fire, um, but really those staff people, Kathy and Ani and Andrea and, and others really, uh, really f uh, fueled those flames and uh, turned that into the organization that became Ventures. You know, the, the folks there now, Beto and his staff are really amazing folks. And, and really, I just want to honor the staff people there. I had the opportunity to meet some of them last time I was there, and I, I miss uh, not having to see, getting to see them this time. Uh, but those are some of the best people you'll ever meet. Some of the most committed people, and uh, they're the best. They really are. Um, so this organization's in great hands. And you know, after 25 years, that's unusual. Most organizations don't last 25 years. Um, they lose their footing, they, they get stale, they get stagnant. But Ventures is a very vibrant organization with uh, high quality staff and leaders and board and the support of the community. This event is a testament to that um, support. Um, you know, sometimes in the interceding years, I, I was thinking, you know, what would have been lost if we'd if we'd given up, there were two or three times we almost closed our doors. Um, and, and just thinking about the 25 years of, of businesses that wouldn't have gotten started, the massage therapists and the florists and the, uh, uh, everyone, the artists uh, in, the, in the shops downtown and at the airport, um, those, all, those folks may not have gotten started. And that would have been a tremendous loss, not only to them, but to all of us, to the community at large. And you know that this type of project, this type of, type of program is about giving people the opportunity to give back to the community their unique gifts and their unique um, abilities and skills. And at the same time, you know, take care of their families and, uh, and, and be something that they want to be. That's who they are, these businesses in some cases. That's really a beautiful thing. Um, so I hope that uh, you're uh, as excited about that as I am, because I still am. And every time I, I see folks in this business plan thing, I, I get excited all over again. Um, you know, this tonight's a, a celebration and, and it's a fundraiser. Um, we're on Facebook, so we know times are a little bit different and we need um, some, this kind of uh, event more than ever. That's why it kept going and that's why Ventures got creative and said, we're going to do this online, which again is a, a testament to uh, their creativity and their commitment to not give up on this. Um, you know, I think about uh, money and funding that money's really very creative and money's about the future. It funds things in the future. It creates things out of nothing. It's magic. You know, if you, all those folks that have given money in the past to uh, Washington Cash and Ventures, I really want to thank you. Um, it, uh, it kept things going. You made all of those successes possible. Um, so I want to thank you. And now it's time to look toward the future. Let's fund the new thing. Let's create something in the future with your gift tonight. Uh, I think we've uh, our goal tonight's twenty five thousand dollars. We've we're down that road. I think we have seventeen thousand to raise, um, and I know that you know for uh, that really means about two hundred fifty dollars per person, maybe twenty five dollars a month. That's kind of what we're asking, um, and then I think gifts up to uh, fifty dollars and more get matched up to fifteen thousand dollars, which is really really helpful to the whole thing. Um, you know, if you're like me, you come to fundraisers with kind of a number in your head, like, I'm just going to give this amount. Um, and online, it's even a little more anonymous. Um, so I'm really trying to hold you to this. This is a fundraiser, y'all. Um, but most of the times that a number is just kind of like a throwaway number. You're not going to think about it tomorrow. And tonight, I really want to invite you to give a gift that's meaningful. Give a gift that you'll remember tomorrow and next week and next month. And so when the Ventures folks uh, show you an entrepreneur and folks come and sell a product in the stores. That's going to be your success too because you gave an amount that made a difference. You made that business possible uh, and you made the next thing that Ventures is up to possible. Who knows what that's going to be? I don't. Um, so I really request and, and really off, offer you the opportunity tonight to give a gift that makes a difference. I'm going to make one tonight too. 
uh, that makes a difference in my life and something that I'll remember. Um, Cause this is important to me 25 years later, uh, what they're doing is important and it, um, it makes me very happy what's happened there. Um, and I'm very proud and you should be too of that organization and what Ventures is accomplishing every day. I don't know what they're gonna accomplish over the next five years or 25 years or even the next year, but if it's anything like the last 25, it's gonna be extraordinary. And I really want to invite you to be part of that with me uh, and to give a generous gift tonight uh, to fund the future of Ventures. Thanks very much. Take care, I'll see you next time. Bye now. Wow, Peter. What an inspirational story. Thank you for sharing with all of us tonight. As you mentioned, this is about the future of ventures. And I really like what you're saying about how the community has been able to create this organization. They've been sharing their time, their talent, and their treasure. And really more than ever, our community has to step up to support our mission and our small business who are the fiber of our community and all their contributions. So thank you for stepping up tonight and supporting our mission. I also very, very proud to be able to announce all our finalists and the winners of the competition. So I'm going to start with our sixth place winner, Pablo Vélez, Low Art 75 production. Pablo wins a $500 cash prize and hundreds of dollars of in-kind donations from sponsors like GSBA membership, the Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce membership. Felicidades, Pablo. Estoy muy orgulloso de ti. Que sigan los éxitos. Congratulations. Keep the great work. I'm going to announce the next three finalists all together. Of our fifth place winner is Angela Prosper founder of Rainy Day Prosper. Fourth place is Gina Gray and her business, Oliva. And third place is Stephanie Lenz for her pitch about Scoop Marketplace. These finalists each win a $1,000 cash prize and hundreds of dollars for our in-kind prices from our sponsors. I'm very proud of all of you. Congratulations. And thank you for being part of this wonderful program and this wonderful project. Our runner-up is Siobhan Powell on her business Golden Bricks events. Siobhan wins a $2,000 cash prize along with an enhanced price of package from a wonderful sponsors. Congratulations, Siobhan. We are so proud of you and your business model is so inspiring. I'm, so, I'm someone personally who loves the outdoors. Keep the great work. Finally, it gives me so much joy to announce our winner, Judith Echegaray, and her business, Glam Snap Photo Booth. What an amazing pitch, Judith. You were so impressed, and in these times of crisis, you were able to kind of change, pivot it, and really, really, really engage with the community. So. I'm so excited and proud of you because as a member of the Latinx community and the founder of the Latinx program, this is the second year that we do a bilingual pitch competition. And so proud, so proud of you. Thank you. Now, this is an opportunity for us to kind of share some kind of behind the scenes because our training manager, Amy Hollander, was able to kind of surprise Judith and call her and see her surprises and just celebrate with her her success. So here we go and I want to see what is the response from Judith and her uh, about her learning about that she's the winner. So let's say, let's go and see. So the competition was fierce. We had really close, uh, a really close competition, uh, less than like one point between each of the competitors. But Judith, you are the Innovators winner. You won. Usted ganó. Usted ganó el gran premio. Quedó en primer lugar. You were in first place. ¿En serio? Yes. You <laughs> won. Yeah. Congratulations. I'm so excited for you. ¿En serio? ¿En serio? Usted quedó en primer lugar. Hablo muy en serio. <laughs> ¿Es en serio? Sí, es en serio. Se lo juro, es en 
es muy... <risa> no lo puedo sí. creer. ¿En serio? Es en serio. Entonces, ah, ¿en serio? 5 mil dólares. You won 5,000 dólares. Entre otros premios más. Y de verdad le felicito porque el concurso no fue nada fácil. Everyone was super qualified. It was an easy competition. And I'm so excited for you. What a special moment. That's so inspiring. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is not how we were supposed to celebrate our 25 year anniversary. But I'm very proud of what we have accomplished tonight as a community and we all came together. So our clients, our staff, our board of directors, all of you at home, all our supporters. So thank you very much for being with us tonight. Uh, it's time for me to say buenas noches. Have a good evening. And then I hope I can see you next year at InnoVentures 2021. Stay tuned. And don't forget to vote for your favorite. Uh, we will have an opportunity to vote. All the information is in the comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Muchísimas gracias. Muy buenas noches. Que descansen. Manténganse salvos y sanos en casa. Stay safe and healthy at home. Good night.